Hello. Welcome to another biology podcast. Try a bit of a Kiwi accent today instead of you. Just giving it a bit of something different. So hello. I hope you're impressed. Even though I'm a pommy, I can still speak the local lingo. So this is the second part of the protein synthesis podcasts. We've already talked about transcription. So this podcast will look at translation and RNA processing. So without further ado, let's get stuck into some biology. So on your screens at the minute, you'll see the picture of the transcript, which is pretty much where we finished off in the last podcast. And that transcript is a piece of mRNA, which was created through the process of transcription, the first of the three processes of protein synthesis. So at this point, what we've done is we've got, have gone from our DNA, our piece of DNA, an mRNA transcript or an mRNA copy of the DNA has been made. And in this next podcast, we're going to look at how can that mRNA be used, that transcript mRNA, be used to actually create a polypeptide, which is basically uh, the, the major form of a protein. So proteins are made of polypeptides. So first of all, let's have a look at the finished product, and let's have a quick look at a polypeptide and what it actually looks like. So on your screens there, you'll see the image of the polypeptide. And it's shown as a series of pink circles all joined together. And basically, a polypeptide is a long chain of these things called amino acids. So basically, proteins or polypeptides, which is basically the ingredients, the, the, the parts of proteins. In fact, some proteins are just long polypeptides. A protein is made up of a long chain of amino acids. So the amino acids are like the building blocks of proteins. Now, the different circles represent amino acids, and you can see in the middle of the circles there are little three-letter codes there. And each one of those represents one of 20 amino acids. So one polypeptide might differ, for, differ from another polypeptide by having a different order of the 20 amino acids. So that's what a polypeptide really looks like. So now let's look at, okay, well, how do we, we've got from the DNA to the mRNA. How do we now get from the mRNA to actually create a polypeptide like the one on the screen at the minute? Well, let's start by looking at where it actually happens. On your screens right now, you'll see an image of a ribosome, which is a big orange thing. And in the middle, that sort of squiggly looking molecule thing, which is something called tRNA. So that's the second type of RNA that we're actually going to look at. And the T in tRNA, it's, tra it's standing for transfer. So at the end of the last podcast, what happened to the transcript was it moved over to the big orange thing or the ribosome and then joined on. Now, what we're going to look at now is this process of translation whereby the ribosome actually moves along that transcript and basically reads the code. And with the help of tRNA, we'll actually translate that code into a series of amino acids in order to create a polypeptide. So just let's just quickly remind ourselves of that word translate. So we might think of translating as involved with foreign languages, for example. So we might say, OK, well, I'm going to translate the English word for thank you into French. The French word for thank you is merci. So basically, you're just changing one piece of information that's kept in a word in English, and you change it to a different code, which, for example, would be French. This time, you're changing information that's kept in the form of mRNA, and you're changing it into information that's kept in the form of an order of amino acids. So basically, somehow the mRNA is actually going to be translated by the ribosome, and that's what we're going to look at now. So what we know is the ribosome actually moves along the mRNA, and it starts off, it finds the five end of that transcript, which I'm talking about the carbon atom there in the sugar, and it basically then starts to move along the mRNA transcript, and it moves along in threes. And when I say threes, I mean three bases at a time. And each three base section of the mRNA is what we call a codon. Now what it does is the, uh, the ribosome is able to recognize different codons, different sections of DNA, different three base sections of DNA, and actually translate the information of in that codon into an amino acid. So if you're looking at your screen right now, you'll see a chart that has lots of little sort of codes all over it and we'll talk about how we can use that in a second just now. So let's say that the ribosome moves along three bases and the three bases of the mRNA transcript it moves along are G, U and U. So the first base is G, the second base is U and the third base is U. See if you can figure out by using that table and pausing this for a second and figure out 
what amino acid, which one of the 20 amino acids will be created. And basically, the different amino acids are represented in the table by those three-letter things there. So, for example, we've got um, PRO, which is basically uh, an abbreviation for amino acid. Um, we've got lots of different ones there. So there's 20 different amino acids. Which amino acid would the codon GUU code for? See if you can figure that out. Okay, so I'm hoping that you've picked out the right one. So if we actually go for the first, on the left-hand side of the table, you'll see G. So you've selected G. Then go up to the top um, part of the table there, where you should select G, uh, sorry, U. So you've got uh, basically, um, you've gone from G to U. And then looking at the column on the right-hand side, you pick the next U and then line them all, all up so we can see where they intersect and you should find that the amino acid that is created by that codon or that, that codon codes for is VAL which is abbreviated for valine so the amino acid is called valine so the codon GUU is coding for valine so when the, um, the ribosome moves along that transcript if it sees GUU a three letter codon then it knows that that's actually coding for valine. And you can use that same table to figure out what all the other different combinations of the bases would actually give as well. So if you've got different codons, you can find out which amino acids those different codons actually code for. So the question is now, the, the ribosome is able to move along the transcript and, and decode that by, say, for example, translating the codons into amino acids. So now let's look at, okay, well, how does it then get the amino acids so that it can create the right polypeptide? And that's where this molecule tRNA comes into things. So on your screens now is a close-up picture of what a tRNA molecule would look like. Don't worry, you don't need to know the detailed structure of this. Um, there's two main parts that you do need to know about. And the two main parts are the top part where you can see it says amino acid. And the bottom part where you can see it's pointed out is anticodon. Now basically, like I've said, tRNA, the T stands for transfer, and what tRNA actually does is it actually picks up the different amino acids and takes them to the ribosome. Now since there are 20 different amino acids, there are also 20 different types of tRNA. So each type of tRNA is responsible for carrying a different amino acid. So on the diagram there, you'd see where the amino acid is at the top, and that's where the amino acids, such as, for example, valine, that we talked about a little while ago, that's where that would be kept, at the top of the molecule. But now let's have a look at the bottom of the molecule, where we can see it says anticodon. Now you should be able to see that the anticodon there says C, G, G. And that's basically an order of three bases, C, G, and G. And you should also notice right at the bottom of the diagram, there's a little line there that says mRNA, and it says codon, G, C, C. And the anticodon actually matches to that part of the mRNA transcript. So what's actually happening there is the transcript, as it goes through the uh, ribosome, each codon is then matched up with an anticodon for tRNA. So let's have a look at what that looks like. We should see on the video there of um, the ribosome and the tRNA actually sort of joined up to the transcript. So you're actually looking inside the ribosome here. So at the top of the screen, you can see the transcript, the mRNA. You see the yellow, sorry, the orange thing is the ribosome. And then in, in the middle, actually attached to the transcript, the mRNA, you've got the tRNA. And the tRNA is atta attached to the mRNA by its anticodon, which matches up with the, each of the different codons of the mRNA. And on the video now, you can see another tRNA molecule coming in and attaching to the next codon on the mRNA. And now what you've got coming into view there, this sort of cube and the little triangle thing, they're the amino acids that the different tRNA molecules are carrying. And the ribosome is then giving it some energy to actually join those two amino acids together. And that first tRNA molecule then moves away and leaves its amino acid behind. It can then go and find another amino acid to join up with. Now we're nearly up with the 10 minutes here, so rather than rush the next 30 seconds, I'm going to stop this podcast here, and we're going to continue that on part three of this, okay? So um, I'll speak to you in a second. Keep it real.